Hello and welcome to this session on values, aspirations and lifestyles of post-materialists and authoritarians in 25 countries. My name is Martijn Lampert. I'm a director of uh, Glocalities, an international research company. And uh, I'm co-presenting together with... Ronald Engelhardt. I'm a political science professor at the University of Michigan and founding president of the World Value Survey Association. And I'm pleased to be working now with Martin Lampart. Thank you, Ron. I'm going to start sharing my screen with our presentation now. Um, so you can lead us through our first hypothesis. Um, and those are presented here. The basic hypothesis is that two streams of research that started out at different times under different conditions actually are intimately related. One of these is the authoritarian personality literature, which goes back to classic 1950 work by Alpert et al. The authoritarian personality, which is based on Freudian uh, theoretical basis and a now obsolete measuring system, but the theory was basically sound. That is, the basic concept was that they were trying to trace the origins of what led to the uh, emergence of authoritarianism, fascism in the 1930s. And my interpretation is that this reflected not so much Freudian child rearing uh, forces as fundamental insecurity, desperate fear of starvation, which was widespread in the Germany in the 1930s and in the world at large. And that this phenomenon reflects survival insecurity. Conversely, when I started doing research on post-materialism in the 1970s, it was an effort to understand how the unparalleled security of the post-war era had led to a new generation that took survival for granted and that viewed survival as secure. Therefore, they could move on to some of the other many goals that humans have. And they emphasized there was an anti-war movement, but there was gender equality, quite prominent, environmental protection, uh, tolerance of handicapped, gays, lesbians, a much more open worldview linked with the fact that people took survival for granted. Logically, the two should be opposite poles of the same dimension. So Martin and I tested this out in 25 diverse countries and found that indeed, they are opposite poles using the a class a revised version of the authoritarian as a measure and my 12 item post materialist materialist values index we found we hypothesized that they would be this would hold true across countries because survival is a concern everywhere and furthermore we hypothesized that this dimension would be related to personal values archetypes aspirations and lifestyles as they were studied in the localities program Martin, why don't you tell us more about the localities? Sure. So we have specialized already for more than two decades in conducting a values-based research uh, internationally, departing from a holistic view of, of, on people, and that, that their, their uh, values, their lifestyles are interrelated and can they be interpreted in a larger context. And for that, we conduct since 2014 uh, annual waves of, of international research and actually in our latest wave in 25 countries listed here we added uh, in cooperation with Professor Engelhardt this post-materialism battery but also the Altemeyer authoritarianism items um, to test the hypothesis that Engelhardt just uh, described and here is what we found uh, we found this is in the pooled data set of 25 countries that there is a single a strong dimension with, on the one hand, uh, statements such as this country really needs more law and order and not more civil rights, and on the other uh, end of the spectrum, homosexuals and families should be praised for being brave enough to defy family values, uh, traditional family values. And we also see that the materialist, post-materialist values of uh, Engelhard always have a strong anti-authoritarian loading in this dimension. And this goes uh, for each single country as well. Furthermore, if we zoom out and take uh, a look at the broader context, this uh, dimension is also part of the cross-cultural super dimension 
that was um, described earlier in uh, Ingelhardt's book, um, Cultural Evolution, um, where people from, uh, scholars from various disciplines and, and, and the theoretical backgrounds um, all come to the same dimension. And you see that with Schwartz, Hofstede, Engelhardt, and also the, our uh, control freedom dimension in the localities program. So what did we do? We cut up the um, authoritarianism, post materialist dimension in 10 equal parts. And on the left hand side here on the horizontal axis, you find people who are in the top end of the authoritarian axis. And on the right hand side, you find the post materialist. And then you find social values of the localities research program, such as the father should be the head of the household. Of course, post materialists are the most opposed to this. I'm proud of the flag of the country. That's a strongly authoritarian item. Furthermore, when we look into the realm of archetypes, a uh, Jungian archetypes, which is uh, about storytelling and mythology, you see that the archetype of the ruler who stands for power and control is strongly resonating, of course, with authoritarians, but also the archetype of the innocent, eh, which stands for safety, a purity and unconditional loyalty fits with them and not so much with post materialists. Furthermore, if we look at the UN Sustainable Development Goals, a totally different topic, we see that authoritarians are into good health and well-being. And that's what they prioritize, clean water and sanitation related to survival. And on the other hand, we know that post materialists are more into climate action, for example, and gender equality. Also, with respect to consumer branding and positioning of brands, this axis is highly relevant. And, um, brands such as Netflix, IKEA, Apple fit with uh, post materialist values. Uh, Apple's founder, Steve Jobs, said, Think different. That's a, a post materialistic trait. And I want to delve into a more um, actual topic now, which is the battle between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Uh, here you see that Donald Trump within the US represents the authoritarian. And deciles uh, very much so, and very strongly, whereas Joe Biden, of course, is opposed by authoritarians. But it's interesting to see that amongst the top post materialists, there is also some opposition against uh, Joe Biden. And we know that those people uh, would have preferred Bernie Sanders as a candidate. However, we know that um, Donald Trump has a lot of opposition in the US, uh, much more than Joe Biden does. And Joe Biden has the potential uh, to rid the country of Donald Trump, which also has an appeal to uh, a lot of people. So let's go to the uh, conclusions. As stated before, um, all three hypotheses are confirmed. The authoritarian post materialist uh, dimension is related to the super dimension and to a lot of values and archetypes and can be seen in a holistic fashion. Ron, up to you. The findings transcend disciplines. And this is obvious because survival is the basic concern of all humans, all organisms even. And thus, biologists, sociologists, psychologists, economists, political scientists, uh, people from many fields have done research and come up with findings that tap this dimension, though they approached it from many different uh, expectations. Further research I think would be interesting, for example, the COVID-19 pandemic clearly is life-threatening. Consequently, our implication is we would expect this to drive people from the post-materialist pole toward the authoritarianism pole. RJ? Thank you for your attention. This was our brief presentation. Of course, we would encourage you to read our paper. And if you want to uh, know more about this uh, research, you can contact me directly at m.lampert.localities.com. Thank you. Have an inspiring conference. Bye. So long.